welcome. I'm Selena Mead with the VSB TV 11 Evening News on this Friday, July the 18th. In our top story tonight, the current session of Parliament spluttered to a halt today when the opposition PLP failed to take their seats in the chamber for the second week in a row, leaving Premier Michael Dunkley no choice but to ask that the House adjourn until Friday, November the 7th, when the throne speech will be delivered. During the first half of today's sitting, PLP members sat in their private rooms and then went to lunch. The expectation was that they would appear for the afternoon session when a number of bills, including the public access to information bill, were due to be considered. But at 2 p.m., the opposition seats remained empty, leaving independent MP Terry Lister to ask all the questions. The 10-week investigation into the alleged election donation of $350,000 to the OBA was released today by party chairman Thad Hollis and circulated to the parliament and the media. Mr. Hollis provides the history of the donation, which he claims was not known to the OBA executive but was authorized by campaign chairman Senator Michael Fahey. It was used, he says, to pay campaign expenses, including the salaries of consultants Stephen DaCosta and Derek Green. Here is the gist of the conclusions drawn by Mr. Hollis and read for us by VSB News' Brian Darby. It has been confirmed that seven donations were made amounting to $350,000 to an account that was set up by Messrs. Stephen DaCosta and Derek Green. The party executive did not know of the existence of the account or the donation until 18 months later, but it was authorized by the campaign chairman, Senator Michael Fay. The evidence presented shows a scope of work performed by Messrs. De Costa and Green and their teams during the months leading up to the election. There were withdrawals made by the bank account authorized by Messrs. De Costa and Green. Both signatories have represented these withdrawals were pay used to pay for the campaign efforts, including their own salaries. As there was an established relationship with Mr. Nathan Landau as a result of the solicitation for donations, it is disturbing that agents would then be in a position to be retained in a commercial relationship. The possibility of a perceived promise made to Mr. Landau and his associates either prior to the donation being made or as a consequence of the donation. However, if there was any promise, it never came to fruition, as evidenced in his failed bid for an extension on the Club Med RFP. The investigation has found instances that could lead to allegations of wrongdoing. Solicitation of funds and receipt thereof unknown to the executive, for example. Poor controls on expenditure, leading to allegations as to actually receive the money. Commercial relationships with a donor with an interest in building a development in Bermuda post the general election meetings with Mr. Lando on a private trip to discuss development in Bermuda and the lack of transparency with regard to the purpose of that trip and why. I discovered in the course of this investigation other matters of equal concern. However, I have been instructed by resolution to stay within the original statement of 14 May 2014. This covers the donation and only those persons not under the Ministerial Code of Conduct, so therefore containing and limiting the scope and only that which is in my report. Brian Darby reporting for VSB News. Thank you, Brian. The bill that will introduce gaming to Bermuda, if approved, will be presented for Parliament in the next session, according to Minister of Tourism Sean Crockwell. He told VSV News' Brian Darby that government wanted to produce the best legislation possible rather than rush it through. The government's plan was always to have the primary legislation during this session and then the regulations when we came back in November. Now that we're going to use the summer to make sure we get the primary legislation right, we're going to do both, primary and secondary legislation when we come back in November. So it keeps government on its schedule. Um, but this is a very complicated uh, industry. It's the most regulated industry in the world. And uh, we are engaged with um, a consultant that helped the Singaporean government to get their statutory framework uh, correct. This, in the, this particular company um, helped them. They're going to help us. We're using the Singaporean as our model. Uh, Singapore took two years before they actually produced their legislation, so we know that we don't want to rush it, so we're going to take uh, the summer months to make sure we get it right. I'm very happy that we currently have a comprehensive fresh draft, which looks very good, so we are certainly uh, on the right track. Are there any hotels or development waiting for this word that which will determine whether they come or not? Well, I don't think it's going to determine whether they come. As you know, the Desarrollers group uh, have put in their proposal 
proposal an amenity sort of boutique casino in St. George's. Um, so they're very eager to see that it gets approved in the house. And there are other, we've, we've heard from the Morgus Point group that they're interested uh, as well. So many people want the statutory uh, framework to be approved by uh, the House of Assembly. Um, but however, the issuing of licenses will be devolved to a, an independent gaming commission. So once uh, we get the framework in place, we will then put, appoint the commission, um, and that process may involve uh, the opposition as well, may involve the governor in terms of making um, you know, their representations uh, to the Gaming Commission, and then the Gaming Commission will be able to then make a decision. Bermuda's leadership role in the group of UK dependent territories has been strengthened by the contacts made by Premier Michael Dunkley during his recent visit to Cayman for a meeting of island leaders. And the Council is now planning the agenda for its meeting in December with the UK Minister with responsibilities for the dependent territories, whoever he or she might be. Bermuda is basically is, is a leader of the overseas territories, um, so they look for us uh, not only for guidance and consultation, but support. And uh, just as well, we look to them uh, to understand their challenges and concerns so we can work more effectively uh, with the UK um, to push forward uh, programs and policies that we think are important as well. So this was a pre-planning exercise in advance of the meeting uh, later this year where we'll sit down with various ministers of the UK government um, and, and talk about some of the issues that uh, we deem necessary. Now, um, <laughs> one of the things that I haven't mentioned and in, in didn't mention in my statement uh, today to the House is it, it will be interesting at that time. I think members um, of the public are well aware that uh, over the past couple of days there have been tremendous upheaval in the political realm in the UK with changes to Cabinet. And so we know that as we get closer to the May election, um, there might be um, more changes take place and there might be less of a focus on the issues of the day and more of a focus on getting elected in May. But it's still important for us to get get over there um, and have the opportunity to dialogue so we can make sure that we move forward um, in a position of strength and make sure that all our territories provide hope and prosperity for the people. Well, hardly an irritant to them at this moment or even a, a, a distraction, but there must be issues I mean, coming through the Foreign and Commonwealth Office that demand that we get fair warning. There are a number of issues. Um, you know, the, we took the opportunity in this meeting to uh, uh, get an update on um, fast meetings and those issues that were on the table, and to to set out an agenda for uh, for the meeting in in December. Look, some of the issues that were on the on the agenda before uh, that still have to be uh, cleared up and move forward is the passport issues. Um, all the British passports being called back into the mainland. That was one that uh, generated a good deal of discussion, and we still are going to work on it. There will be a series of emancipation events towards the end of this month. The highlights being the memorial lecture on Thursday, July the 24th at the Bermuda National Gallery and the emancipation ceremony on Sunday, July the 27th at the Earl Cameron Theatre. And the spotlight will also be directed at six families from Hamilton Parish and six families from Southampton Parish. Community and Cultural Affairs Minister Wayne Scott said, it was right to take a moment to salute those who persevered against insufferable odds. It's very important that we understand and, and know our history and recognize um, those who have worked hard to, to help to get us where we are today. And I think the Department of Community and Cultural Affairs has done a wonderful job putting this together. You know, we've got the um, creative, uh, Mayor X, um, helping to, to work with, with, with this again and produce the, the, the show, which I can tell you last year was an extraordinary performance. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to miss the presentation this year because, of course, of our Commonwealth Games, um, but I will be looking forward to reviewing the um, the, the, the video product and it's something that you know I'm, I'm keen to, to, to see and of course when we look at the families uh, this year it, it's going to be honoring uh, families from Hamilton Parish and Southampton Parish that have had significant um, input or influence on where we are today in Bermuda. Would you agree that perhaps the importance of the moment and the success of the moment is some, some responsibility of the fact that they choose pride against prejudice? Well, um, touche. Uh, I, I think that it is very important that we look at it, what history has taught us. And history has taught us that you 
need to stay vigilant, but you also have to work together and you know look at at, at progress, uh, as you said, of, of, of pride. Certainly, pride is what is is the determination that keeps you moving forward. But I think there are constructive ways to achieve change and there are destructive ways to achieve change. And I think if you look at our history, we have many examples of both. And it's the productive methods that have been used that are endearing and honored and help to move us where, where we are. And, and unfortunately, some of the destructive ways have been and are still, um, you know, just um, areas of, of, of blemishes on, on, on Bermuda as a whole. Still ahead, we have Valentina with a weather preview. Thank you, Selena. And taking a look at the radar, currently clear conditions. Stay tuned for the weekend weather forecast. The weather radar picture provided courtesy of the Ministry of Transport on BSB TV 11. You can count on us. For your cut match picnic, save half price on Dole Coleslaw. $1.99 for a 14-ounce bag. Frozen baby back pork spare ribs, $2.99 per pound. Brush on your favorite ribs. Craft barbecue sauce, $1.69 for an 18-ounce bottle. 3.75-ounce bag. All varieties, wise potato chips, just $1.49. Briar's ice cream, $6.29 for all varieties of 48-ounce tubs. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more super cut match special. Now at Big Saving Zone, there's the Kid Zone. See the latest bedroom ideas for tots to teens. There's a large selection of beds, bedding, all kind of furniture designed especially in mind for your child. And see the array of accessories for all ages. Big Saving Zone is the home of Ashley Furniture and Serta Mattresses in Bermuda. And the Kid Zone is only at Big Saving Zone, at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Do you know your rights as a consumer? Visit the Consumer Affairs website to find out how to hire a contractor, how to buy and maintain your vehicle, information on buying secondhand goods, tips for seniors and teens, personal finance tips, product recall information, to file a complaint with Consumer Affairs. For the latest consumer news and much more, visit ca.gov.bm. Bermuda, you are in for a treat with the Hamish Stewart Band performing at the third annual Bermuda Peace Day Concert. Hamish Stewart is a former member of the Average White Band, was a former band member of Paul McCartney, and more recently with Ringo Starr's All Star Band. Not many guys get to do that. Joining Hamish on stage is Bermudian drummer Andy Newmark. Andy, of course, played on Double Fantasy with John Lennon. Bermuda's looking forward to the funkiest drummer on the planet hitting the stage with Hamish Stewart. On guitar is Adam Phillips, who's currently a member of the Straits Band. On bass is Steve Pierce, who's performed with everyone from Madonna to Placido Domingo. Rounding out the band on keys is Jim. Watson, who has toured with Pat Stevens, Gary Barlow, James Taylor, brand new heavies, the Hamish Stewart Band, five musicians who will rock Bermuda with the funkiest of music. Get your tickets from www.ptix.pm and save 10% before July 31st. Welcome back to VSV TV 11. Today's lunchtime roundtable discussion reflecting on the legacy of Nelson Mandela attracted a cross-section of Bermudians. The one-hour Cathedral Hall session concluded with the group asking for more. Independent Senator James Jardine, who attended, had these observations. I think we need to come together collectively, uh, and I know it sounds perhaps a bit corny. You know, let's all come together collectively. But I think seriously we have to do that. We have to find a way through all of our differences, through all of the things that are going on around us with one common goal, and that's to make Bermuda a better place. He gave his personal reflections on the meeting, ending with words from one of Mandela's writings, which he found to be very powerful. And it was interesting today, when I first arrived, there was probably a handful of people there. And by the time uh, we actually got started, you know, there was a good crowd in the room. I think people spoke their minds, uh, and I think there was a lot of good discussion around the table, even though it was only for an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, and I think it's healthy. It's healthy to see a cross-section of people, young, old, black, white, uh, businessmen, uh, 
you know, homemakers, everybody. It was a sort of wide cross-section there, and I think that was extremely good to see. We were expected to destroy one another and ourselves collectively in the worst racial conflagration. Instead, we as a people chose the path of negotiation, compromise, and peaceful settlement. Instead of hatred and revenge, we chose reconciliation and nation building. Fire trucks could be seen in the parking lot of the Lindos in Warwick yesterday at around 5 p.m. after a fire broke out on a neighboring residential property. Staff at Lindos noticed smoke blowing across the parking lot, but at first didn't think much of it. Then they saw flames and realized there was a huge fire on the property just above the grocery store. VSV News was on the scene and it appeared that a jet ski had caught on fire. Fire personnel quickly got the situation under control. However, the jet ski appeared ruined beyond repair. The Beach Fest Crown Song Competition is fast approaching, which also means that one deserving Bermudian artist will be the winner of a prize package worth $10,000. The top 10 artists are narrowed down depending on how many views their song gets on YouTube. One of the artists that is entering the competition is Clevie Wilson, who goes by the stage name King Infamous. King Infamous spoke to Julius Matt about where he draws his inspiration for, from music, and the fact that not all of the contestants are playing fair in the competition. I draw my inspirations from real life situations around me, and I just put it together and it just, it's real. It's, it's no sugarcoating, it. there's nothing fake about this music. So how is the uh, Chew Stick competition from your personal perspective going? I know, noticed earlier that you mentioned that some people aren't exactly playing it fair. You no, know, there, there, there's a lot of people out there that are, I would say, buying the views, you know, to make their views go higher. Um, competition, as far as it goes, I could see that it's, it, it's a first thing for them. So obviously there were some kinks that need to be wrapped out. They didn't know that people could buy views. And, and when you say buy views, exactly what do you mean by that? They actually go to a, a website and purchase YouTube views. As an artist um, who's really put so much effort in your heart into your lyrical content, your instrumental content, how does that make you feel that out there people are cheating? I don't like it. You know, if, if you have put hard work into your work, you do not go and buy views. You have to go in and just push your music, because like I've been doing on Twitter mostly every day, um, also on Facebook, LinkedIn, a couple other social networks that I've been pushing it on. You should just go out there and just push your work and see if the people really like it. You can't buy views because then you don't know if who's really liking it and who's not. Can you tell me what the songs are called that you've entered and sort of what they're about? Okay, I have one song called My Trees, and it's actually about, um, okay, you know, people in Bermuda, they love to smoke. They get stopped by the police. They get stopped by the security. And it's just a, a, a situation that I put together, a little story put together about going out with your friends one night, going to the club, um, and you just want to enjoy your life. You can listen to King Infamous songs by following him on Twitter or Facebook. You can also hear his songs and other entries by going to YouTube and searching for Beach Fest Crown Song Competition. The top 10 finalists will perform at Beach Fest, which is scheduled to be held at Horseshoe Bay on July the 31st. Now we'll take a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. the daily markets presented by Bias. North American markets rebounded as risks from geopolitical conflict waned. Treasury prices pulled back on lower safe haven appeal. U.S. stocks rebounded after Google reported higher than expected sales. The S&P rose 1.02 percent to close at 1,978, while the Nasdaq gained 1.57 percent to close at 4,432. Today on the Bermuda Stock Exchange, Argus shares declined 2.56% to $3.80, and Ascendant shares dropped 4.62% to $6.20. Other Bermuda-related stock in the market closed higher. UK stocks were little changed as positive news in healthcare and media companies were offset by uncertainty in Ukraine. The FTSE 100 gained 0.17% to close at 6749 
Negative sentiment weighed on Asian stocks as increased geopolitical risk forced money away from riskier emerging equities. The Hang Sen declined 0.28% to close at 23,455. Latin American stocks were higher at the end of trading. The Argentina index was up the most by 3.79%, while Brazil gained 2.39%. Treasury prices paired yesterday's gains following the Malaysian air incident, with the 10-year U.S. Treasury bond yielding 2.49%, up 4 basis points. The Japanese yen declined 0.18% against the U.S. dollar as demand for safe haven investments waned. The Canadian dollar gained on higher crude oil prices. It was up 0.26% as of the last trade. That was a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. More news after the break. You can count on us. Start grilling this cut match with Purdue Fresh Chicken Thighs or Drumsticks. $1.99 per pound. Juicy whole seedless watermelons, $12.99 each. For your mac and cheese dish, Catelli macaroni, $1.89 for a 500 gram box. Save $1.71 on Libby's mayonnaise, $4.09 for a 32 ounce jar. For the holiday, six packs, regular or Diet Coke, $4.99. Have a safe and enjoyable cup match holiday from the marketplace. You can count on us. Copy Fax is Samsung's authorized dealer service center in Bermuda. If you're looking for a tablet, Copyfax have a range of Samsung's Tab 3, 5 and 7. They have Samsung's ATIV Book, which has a 15.6 inch screen. And the ATIV One computer has a 24 inch touch screen. Be sure you're buying from an authorized Samsung dealer. In Bermuda, it's Copyfax Limited, 96 North Shore Road. They service what they sell. If you've been the victim of an uninsured or hit-and-run driver, your medical and other expenses may not be covered by your insurance. The good news is, there is coverage. The Motor Insurers Fund can provide you with compensation to help you through the crisis, whether suffering from physical injury, loss of wages, or extra expense incurred as a result of your injuries. For further information about the Motor Insurers Fund, visit MIF.BM or call 505-8555. The Motor Insurers Fund, assurance after the unexpected. Welcome back. Let's take a look at sports tonight with Earl Baston. In just under a week's time, 18 of Bermuda's finest athletes will represent the country at the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Scotland. Roy Allen Birch, one of those competitors, says he's mentally prepared for the battle. I've been trying to read more, just like train my brain. Um, that was something that I was missing out on, definitely. Um, you know, training my body so much but not training my mind um, to prepare myself to be at my best in certain situations. So, um, you know, that's been a big thing for me, just to pick up a book and, and um, delve into some psychology of, of sport. Things are heating up for the 2014 Cup Match Classic that will be aired on BSB Channel 11, July 31st and August 1st. Alfred Mabry, the president of the host Somerset Cricket Club, said things are ready in the West End. Somerset is just about all prepared. We're ready to go. Uh, two weeks out. Actually, right now it's two weeks in time. First ball should be rolling. So we're ready. Um, everything is set up. And one thing that we're doing this year at Somerset is for all of those people that have their camps all around the field, we're actually having a decorating competition. So come and see. If you come early, you'll be able to see how people have decorated uh, to try and make it even more of a festive occasion. So we're ready to roll. Everything is there. We're ready. Regional Under-19 Championships will go ahead in Guyana as planned, the West Indies Cricket Board has assured. The tournament is set to run from August 1st to August 13th and will feature Barbados, Guyana, Jamaica, Leeward Islands, Trinidad and Tobago, Windward Islands, and an ICC America Select Team. Neil Spate, the Bermuda Cricket Board CEO, announced the Bermuda players selected to take part. The, the players that have been selected and that can go, Delray Rawlins, Trey Manders, Anias Bascom, and young Micah Simons from Willicott's left arm SEMA. St. David's Cricket Club player OJ Pitcher was selected as the Shivers Sportsman of the Week. Accepting on his behalf was his teammate, Sammy Robinson. 
So on behalf of Godsons, we'd like to present you this Shiva's 18 year for the Shiva's man um, of the week. And I hope you enjoy. Keep the chivalry alive. Thank you. No problem. On behalf of St. David's Cricket Club and the team, I would like to thank Godsons for this award. Um, and St. David's, we fought ourselves in winning. It was only natural that we come out and congratulate them on their good victory. Thank you. I'm Earl Beeston reporting for BSB Sports. Outlast any storm with the most advanced alkaline battery. This weather segment is brought to you by Duracell Quantum. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the VSB TV 11 weather report brought to you by the Bermuda Weather Service. I'm Valentina Holland. Now let's take a look at the photo shot sent in today by Lisa Whitehead. This was taken at 11 a.m. out at South Shore. What a beautiful shot, and you can see the ship in the far distance there. Thank you, Lisa, for sending that in. Temperatures high today was 84 degrees at 2 in the afternoon, and the low was 79 at 4 in the morning. Currently 81 degrees, humidity 75%, winds south-southeasterly 11 knots, and the barometric pressure is steady at 30.29 inches. The rainfall index for July, so far we've had 1.41 inches, total for the year 28.05 inches, and normally we would have seen 29.45 inches thus far. And taking a look at our satellite, the Bermuda Azores High will continue to influence the region with generally partly cloudy skies and easing winds through the period. Gateway City's conditions, Atlanta, thunderstorms are likely 81 degrees, Boston mostly cloudy 78, Charlotte cloudy 82 degrees, 82 in London light rain, Miami partly cloudy 92, New York mostly cloudy 80 degrees, 92 in Orlando partly cloudy, Partly cloudy in Philadelphia, 84. Toronto, mostly cloudy, 72 degrees. And 81 in Washington, mostly cloudy. And back at home tonight, partly cloudy, low near 78. Winds south-southeasterly at 10 to 15 knots. And tomorrow, sunny to partly cloudy, high near 85. Winds southeasterly, 14 to 18 knots and decreasing to 8 to 12 knots. Mariners report for tonight, no warnings are in effect. Seas inside the reef are up to one foot, outside the reef are three to five feet, and the sea surface temperature is 82 degrees. And the Mariners port report for tomorrow, no warnings are in effect. Seas inside the reef up to one foot, outside are two to four feet. Low tide will be 9.06 a.m., and the high tide will be at 3.24 in the afternoon. And for your five-day forecast, on Sunday, partly cloudy, high near 85. Monday, mostly sunny, high near 86. Tuesday, partly cloudy, high near 85. And Wednesday, mostly cloudy and showers, high near 82. And for our photo winner of the week, this is a shot sent in by Sally Topley. And you'll see the spirit of Bermuda out on the Great Sound. What a beautiful shot taken early in the morning. Thank you, Sally, for sending that in. And someone will be in touch with you to give you your prize of dinner for two. Thank you for joining us tonight, and thank you to Jeff Torgerson, our meteorologist from the Bermuda Weather Service. Have a great evening. Outlast any storm with the most advanced alkaline battery. Today's weather forecast was brought to you by Duracell Quantum. Before we leave you tonight, we'd like to dedicate this newscast to the memory of longtime 1450 DJ Dennis Mitchell. He will be greatly missed by the VSV family. It's the weekend. Have a great one. Be safe. Good night, Bermuda. Wardrobe and makeup for Valentina Holland. Provided by Gibbons Company. VSB, TV11, Bermuda.